Community College Board of Trustees monthly meeting Friday, July 8th has now begun. Uh, can we get roll call? Frank Ariola. Here. Carlo Leon Guerrero. Here. Richard Sablon. Here. Rose Greeno. Here. Eloy Harrell. Kenley McGuini. Here. We have a point. Dr. Mary O'Connor. Here. Kenneth Bautista. Simone Bollinger. Attorney Rebecca Wrightson. Here. We're good. Thank you. Recital of the mission statement. Guam Community College is a leader in career and technical workforce development, providing the highest quality student center education and job training for migrations. The approval of the minutes. Can I get a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Yes, second. I second the motion. Okay, let's review the minutes. Soon. We also received another hundred thousand from Gita that will support the nursing program and uh, funding from the Department of Interior to provide grant training for nonprofit organizations on Guam and to purchase a donor management software to support our alumni development. So that is um, funding that we received from DOI. Um, in addition, yesterday we completed the uh, DPW Clopping Bird uh, Bus Driving Boot Camp, and so all of those students obtained their D license. And we also um, completed the first child care boot camp with 17 participants, and the second boot camp is already ongoing. 
And then right now, we'll, um, CEWD is working with Dora to provide career pathway and employment skills training for their housing residents. And the Bureau of Women's Affairs um, has awarded scholarships to uh, women to complete their GED or adult education, and they intend to award $5,500 scholarships to support that program. Dr. Carter, I have a question. Uh, with the um, child, early childhood, uh, I know there was tons of advertising that uh, I heard it on the radio. I don't know if you also heard it. There, uh, how was the uh, response? So the response is really good because uh, it's a partnership um, because public health has so much money that they're working with GIDA, so there's a whole uh, advertising and marketing yeah. program to support it? that. It's really good. So uh, they've been consistently recruiting, but it provides, I think, up to $675 for a child to be placed in daycare. Yeah. And so what they're seeing now is that many of the daycares are filled to capacity, but by getting additional trained um, child care workers, they're hoping that they're going to be able to expand. Yeah. Did John participate in the uh, coordination of the advertising, or was this no, so that's a, through GIDA. Through GIDA. And okay. Yeah, so yesterday at the um, at the uh, completion ceremony, uh, the director of his team mentioned that just for the child care program alone, he has about a hundred million Whoa. that he needs to use, but that's been the barrier for a lot of folks getting back to work. So his front, so they're trying to support frontliners um, and frontliners are not just the nurses and the doctors, but also grocery workers yes. and all a whole series of individuals that need daycare in order for them to get back to work. Yeah, thank you. So that's, that's been um, that's been very good. Um, in addition, uh, we've been working on several other projects here on campus. A lot of the CARES funding projects have been um, ongoing including the continuation for AC replacement. Uh, we do have the building generator um, that is uh, working through their permitting process now and continuing to do the underground water leak de detection. Um, in addition to that, um, the 300,000 uh, gallon water tank refurbishment is just about finished, and so we're just putting the final, uh, final touches on that for now. Dr. Collins, what's the average time now with our uh, latest construction projects from start to finish? So, for example, the DNA building that. Uh, that so, it's about a little more than two years. Six. It's about a two year time frame. Um, That's permitting all the way through, right? Permitting, right? Yeah. So through uh, occupancy, I'm sorry. Yeah, and we're still waiting for occupancy for those last two uh, buildings. But that drives up the cost of our facilities because yeah. of the extra time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll report on the other um, CIP projects uh, later on. Thank you very much for the report. Uh, Kennedy. So, um, Richard College hosted the Summer Bridge Program from June 1st to June 17th which my fellow tutors, staff, and I assisted with high school graduates with um, registration for fall 2022, completing FAFSA, and preparing for a placement test. How did it go? Well, How was the response yet? Yeah, yeah. Very a lot. And then on June 7th, um, yesterday, I attended the boot camp completion ceremony at the FPA, and the total of 31 participants completed the two programs, which are the child care provider certification program and bus driving boot camp, and received their certificate of completion. And um, invitations were sent to speakers who will be presenting at the fall 2022 student, or, uh, student orientation scheduled on Monday, August 15th, 9 a.m. And then today is our our, uh, our training for our new class officers. Oh, good. Good. Very good. Thank you so much. Dr. Khan, you know, the uh, boot camps, do we know if any of these uh, members that are selected have, have attended GCC beforehand? Or is, is this all new business? Because I know it, it, it sounds like it's new business, and this is good for you know uh, enrollment or to subsidize the de decrease in enrollment. So, I, so I would that. say a lot of them are, um, for the most part, would be considered new students for us. They've actually been, uh, the boot camps have actually been supplementing what we don't get on a regular semester. Um, and so that's helping to stabilize the um, Registration because yeah. in every boot camp there is college credit that is offered, whether it's three credits or five credits, it just depends. So they're considered part of the uh, enrollment count. 
But we always, so all of the boot camps are supposedly lined up so that once they get employed, they can enter into apprenticeship. That's the goal. Of course, it takes a little bit of time and paperwork for the employer to get them actually registered in. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, we're slowly um, creeping in that. You know, the biggest um, demand that we have right now really is in the area of ship. Yeah. Uh, because ship repair seems to be expanding and yeah. continuing to expand. So good careers also, right? Yeah. Says, yeah. Yeah. And we're just about ready to launch um, the um, advanced welding uh, with an off-island firm that will provide, because we don't have a lot of the um, instructors to provide the advanced training for like in welding. So uh, we're going to be, we are going to be contracting with an um, organization in Hawaii to come to provide some training for us. So this renovation is key of the workforce Correct. development uh, warehouse. Correct. And, and if that's a steel structure, what's what's the timeline that we think we're going to have for that So I think, the, well, depending, because uh, we're just reviewing the, um, the, the scope of work has already been provided and the whole e, &E design has already been provided by the architects. And so now all we're doing is aligning it to make sure that it meets the EDA requirements yeah. and then we'll put it out to bid. Um, but we're anticipating because it's an interior renovation, just depending on what they find, maybe it'll probably take about a year. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a busy year again, then. Yeah. It's okay. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Um, Board of Trustee uh, Community Outreach Report. Uh, does anybody have anything to report? Hawaii or conference? How was the conference? It was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, the Hawaii weather is uh, always nice, and uh, the accommodations. Uh, uh, Moana Hotel was excellent, and the uh, transportation back and forth to uh, to the uh, Kanyoi uh, uh, Community College is also uh, very accommodating. The uh, shuttle lines back and forth. How was the participation from NMI and uh, Palau and FSM? Did they uh, participate in this? Uh... Actually, I, uh, unless uh, I didn't see anybody from the CNMI. CNMI attended the first part of it only because they were hosting the Pacific Games. So I think some of them came from it earlier because mm -hmm. there were two uh, conferences back to back. So I think they participated in the front end and then had to leave. Oh, okay. So some of them did that. FSM, uh, because their borders are still kind of closed, uh, they uh, participated remotely. So there were a few folks from uh, COM and FSM online. Palau had a small contingent. American Samoa had a large contingent. And so was Samoa. And, yeah, American Samoa. And, um, and then, of course, the, us and the university. Um, and then Hawaii had a few. Okay. Not that many, but they had a few. Anybody else have anything to report? Yeah. Um, I attended the American Nurses Association uh, membership assembly. And during that assembly, I also did the lobby day. And one of the biggest discussion actually in our <coughs> is the um, nursing workforce. You know, we are estimated by the end of the year, you know, that we're going to have about half a million nurses that are retiring. In December 2022, overall across the national, we're expecting a 1.1 million nursing needs for nurses. So, um, and um, it's been also a discussion of a lot of um, ways to, you know, this pandemic has highlighted not only in the hospital and the clinic setting, is us how we're going to be able to to work on educating our you know, our nurses that yeah. I miss with is in a really work on the things that that can recruit and open up our, uh, you know, nursing program. I'm not only talking about uh, the registered nursing, the RN program, but also the uh, LPN program yeah. Yeah. and the, uh, you know, CNA medical assistance. So it's really across the board. It's not only the nursing that uh, has some, uh, the biggest impact is really in the healthcare industry. Um, so, um, and there are some that we do like what we're doing. We're doing like a cohort program, short term, for the, some of the <coughs> technical um, uh, 
part of the healthcare team. Yep. So we did that with our CNA, we did that with our EMT. So it's really an open up into a big collaboration and really looking at how are we uh, putting this education and the program itself and to be able to face the um, the need we have in the future. So, and not only for us in the United States, there is this really a global impact. I have a question though. I mean, yes, you know, there's a shortage, but let's say we train them. What uh, what says we keep them here? What stops them from leaving island uh, to take uh, better paying jobs and other things? So what are, um, what's, what's the solution? There's a lot of things on it. Of course, really Guam has to really uh, increase. We really have to make our competitive rates for salary. You yeah. know, as an administrator myself, I did actually look at into looking into the entry level. Our entry level over here in, in Guam is way below what's entry level in the States. We're not even there yet. Okay. Um, government of Guam had some boost during the pandemic. We got a 15% increase. Yeah. But in the private sector, as you know, as we mentioned earlier, how are this going to be able to impact financially and support that to be competitive? So it's really quite a challenge. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, and the other things that <clears throat> I noticed on the migrating is what you mentioned earlier is not only because they get a better job it's the whole family system yeah. we are relocating as yeah. a family yeah. you know the cost of living in guam has yeah. been very high and yeah. uh, it's just really the opportunity to get the kids uh, better education uh, not that our education is that to work and help it's, it's really compounded um, one of the other things that's been really challenging right now is not only in Guam, but in even in a, um, uh, other places in, in the States is the boom of travel nurses. Yeah. They are three times higher salary. And actually, it's really happening. It's not something new that we're we gonna go into that. Um, a lot of our colleagues in the States are actually we're doing extra job now in teaching remotely. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Dr. Khan has actually been working on that. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's this just gonna just let you know. So I'm so excited and to put together and in, in, ensuring our program. We even in locally right now, whatever graduates we have at the LPN, there's still not enough to fill in the needs that we have. Did they talk about any type of funding to help with uh, instructors or? Yes, the anything? title eight. There are some things that we can do for uh, well, funding, and one of the things that we lobby is to really the value of the nursing workforce. It's just yeah. one area that it's really, it's really the. I think it's also be before it's also our fault because we don't really push for the value yeah. of the nurses, like say, physical therapists or other yeah. profession. They really lobby and put a value in the work that they have. Yeah. They always just get carried along with the uh, medical providers or the providers. Now we're trying to emphasize it, look at the value of yeah. the nursing. Yeah, and okay. other Thank you for staff. sharing uh, you yeah. know, your experience. Uh, what was the trip on it? The American Nurses Association Membership Assembly meeting. So we oh, won. Yeah, it's well, in okay. Washington, D.C. Okay. So um, each uh, state had their representative. Mm -hmm. So we usually send three. Uh, yeah. yeah, and even Guam, we're a small island, but we have an equal vote. Well, whatever um, policy or laws that is related to nursing that we participate in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's very important. Uh, excuse me, sir. Um, let's lead back to uh, our boot camps as there's no ship building. Mm -hmm. Heavy equipment operators um, and uh, and even you know truck drivers. Um, they're just like the nurses. They're jumping you know their profession to something more lucrative. And just having come back from Hawaii and kind of uh, you know the, since I was uh, uh, in three commands there: uh, Pacific Command, Pacific Fleet, and Sea Pacific. I kind of updated myself and. Uh, so they uh, the build up, you know, is on this side of the world yeah. because of North Korea and China. So the, uh, the we we could uh, eventually probably uh, you know uh, 
triple or, or quadruple or triple or, or classes in, mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah. Uh, eventually, uh, you know, we, we just uh, kind of plan on it and, and advertise it because that's going to be a very lucrative uh, you know, uh, profession. Well, there's lucrative, there's going to be competition. So I know Dr. Okada and the team is already, you know, they've been planning on, on where to allocate resources and other things. So I know it's in progress. But uh, this information that we get from outside of law is very helpful. Thank you. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, unfinished business. Construction project updates. So starting with the uh, forensic lab. Forensic lab remains at 99.17%. Uh, they are pending some material for electrical devices, the blinds and signage. And then they still need to, in order to get the substantial completion to get the uh, materials needed for the GFD clearance. Same applies for building 300, same situation, but they, uh, building 300 was able to repair the damaged um, underground uh, fiber line that connected between building 300 and forensic lab. Um, we do have a FEMA inspection at the end of this month. Uh, representatives are coming here, so they want to um, inspect the building. Good. Um, would they would GFD consider a uh, kind of a conditional? The fire alarms, yeah. The no. fire alarms not. So yeah. if it's fire alarm driven, then it's yeah, no. Okay. okay. I was thinking some of these things were yeah. were not uh, like the fire alarm. Help, but yeah. <clears throat> fire alarms needed for substantial completion. Um, and that's the one we're waiting for the supply, right? And yeah, the so they space. subbed it to G4S, and so yeah. there's just not Frank. enough supplies. Yeah, Frank, we experienced a bit Everybody. Yeah. on the fire alarm, the supplies at the, the shipment and the supply chain. Yeah, supply chain is. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, and then. Um, wellness Center. Uh, oh, Wellness Center. So. Uh, right now, Dr. Julie is uh, finishing up the uh, USD app USDA application, the loan application for submission. So once that's done, uh, we will submit to USDA for their funding consideration. Um, we, have, we have most of the documentation, we just need to update it. And then Building B, Building B is at 2% complete. <laughs> um, they're working on clearing uh, DPW. Um, and we do have a confirmed groundbreaking date of July 28th at 10 a.m. I may not be here, Dr. Cobb. And then the Workforce Development Center, um, I reported that earlier regarding the uh, grant that we received, and so we will, do, we will start to move that project um, forward. Any uh, business? Okay. No. No. Okay, let's move forward. Let's move into executive session. Any need a motion? Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Okay.
Are we good? I'm good. Okay, I just, well, I just want to thank everyone again uh, for, for their service. Uh, thank you, Dr. I mean, uh, uh, Trustee Hara, for, for your notification. And, you know, we're here to support you. Any help you need, please reach out. Thank uh, you. Uh, I know we had a uh, student that had passed away, and uh, you know, just want to uh, request that we have a moment of silence. Uh, his full name is uh, Gerardo Tenorio. He's a paramedic. Paramedic student, GFD. Yes, yes. And so they had the, uh, I actually attended the uh, services and the uh, funeral, and uh, you know, it was a big loss for our community. So if we could uh, observe a moment of silence for Gerardo Tenorio. very much. Alrighty, uh, before we close, are there any comments? Yeah, I'm going to move to approve the third. Oh, let's do that. Yes, can I get a motion? Second. 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 Okay, none opposed. Presence report is approved. Mm -hmm. Can I get a uh, motion to adjourn? So move, Mr. President. So move to chat. Trustee Harris, second. Okay, no, nobody opposes. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending the meeting and uh, we look forward to next meeting. Thank you. All right, we're going to adjourn.